All right, hey everybody, Mark Burgess here, Big East Bass Fishing. Uh, we are mid to late February 2023, um, a very mild winter here in the Northeast. So the season, for me at least, is going to start here um, pretty soon. A few guys have already been out on the water, um, and I don't blame them. We've had some bizarre weather here, and uh, frankly, I like it. All right, so today I thought we would do a uh, period correct um, video for this time of year. So we're going to do the where and the when. Okay, so the where is in the Northeast. Okay, specifically um, on natural bodies of water, um, not rivers, not man-made impoundments, um, but the water we have here in Southeastern uh, part of the country, or not the country, but the state, um, specifically, you know, where I live down towards Cape Cod, um, areas like that. So th these things can also apply to other areas as well. It's just going to depend on um, water temperature, for the most part, where you're at um, in the cycle of bass migration, okay? So mid to late February, coming up to March 1st, um, I'm going to tell you exactly the baits that I literally start the season with, okay? And I'll talk about where I use them and how I use them, okay? So right off the bat, water temp is going to be in the mid to upper 30s to low to mid 40s in that range, say between 36, 37 and 45-ish, 47, 8-ish in that area. The baits I'm going to start out with um, and how I basically go through a day depending on water temperature and, um, and where I'm fishing, okay? So it, it's a process, all right? So to start off with, I'm fishing, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this before, I'm fishing the area of the lake from say west to east. So I'm covering west, northwest, north, northeast, and east, okay? So half the compass. Reason being is we all know sun rises in the east, sets in the west, it's beating down on that shoreline, okay? Now there, there's exceptions to the rule, there's bass everywhere in the lake. However, that water can be one, two, three degrees warmer than the other areas of the lake. You can still catch them in those other areas, but they're gonna be a little bit more active. So that's, that's where I'm gonna to start to look first off when I do my map study, when I look at my charts. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit of history in there as well, where I may have caught them if I've already been there. So that being said, I typically do not like to fish anything deeper than 20, 25 feet of water uh, this time of year. It, a little bit of that's going to depend on, depend on the thermocline. You'll be able to see that um, on your depth finder as well, where you're going to notice the largest concentration of bait. So if you aren't on the bank, if you are in some relatively deeper water, look for that thermocline. It'll, it, if the sensitivity is right on your electronics, you'll see that. Um, and typically this time of year, that's, that's where it's going to be. So no deeper than that, okay, is where I like to start. Okay, so, and I'm looking for... Um, steeper drop-offs, okay, adjacent to where it's going to be the transition, the bank's going to transition, or the bottom's going to transition from steep up to maybe a flat, okay, so that's all relative to where you're at. I mean, it could be really steep, it, it could be, you know, just a one-foot bottom contour change, so again, some lakes have that, you know, and you can look at your chart and your depth finder or on a map and see those darker lines that are real close together, that that's showing you that that's that's a relatively steep drop uh, in the bottom. Okay, the bottom contour. Basically, fish like it because they can uh, adjust to whatever the temperature is in the water, whatever's going on, up or down, um, and they always will be close to deeper water no matter what. So that's where I like to start. Okay, so all right, let's get to it. So what am I starting with? Um, I really have to force myself to slow down. Okay, I like to cover water, and you do want to cover water to see as much as you can see. However, you need to kind of like fish slowly. 
fast, all right, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna start in that, in that steeper drop adjacent to some flatter areas that they can come up on with some cover. Um, and I'm gonna try to basically take my time, fish real slow. So what am I fishing with? I'm gonna fish with a bait called a silver buddy or a blade bait, okay? Silver buddy, hopefully you can see that, head and sonar, uh, Dale Wyman, uh, who used to be from this area, moved down south, makes a real nice, this is one of his baits, real nice bait. So it's basically a, a piece of steel with a piece of either lead or tungsten, most of the time it's tungsten now. Um, this bait can literally be fished just on the bottom, and then when you pull it, it'll have a very, very distinctive wobble to it. You'll feel the vibration. Okay, some days, I mean, you rip that thing up off the bottom a foot or two, and they'll, and they'll eat it. Other days, they'll literally swim over to it and eat it off the bottom. So you're basically just gonna have to, you know, go through the process like anything else with the bait to see exactly what they want. So I typically like to do this uh, very slowly at first, and I'll just, I'll just pick it up, feel the bait, you'll feel the bait vibration, down, up, down. It stays in one place a long time, especially on a steep drop. You can cover that whole thing, whether you're deeper fishing shallow down the drop, or a lot of times I'll position the boat if I can, shallow and cast out deep. And this way here, it basically stays where I want it longer. And I'm 20, 25 feet, I'm pulling this thing up, 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 up on the bottom, and I'll see where I get a where I get a bite. Okay, so that clues me into exactly where the fish may be, uh, how deep they may be. Okay, so this this bait really gets it done this time of year. Water temperature again in the mid to upper 30s to maybe mid 40s. Okay, and I'm going to have a little a little tackle tip on this on this bait and a lot of these baits here coming up shortly. So blade bait. All right, then. I'm going to switch to a jerk bait, depending on their activity and depending on their depth. If I see that they're relatively shallow, you know, and I mean, you know, in probably that six to eight foot range, five to eight foot range, I'll switch to a jerk bait. Okay, suspending jerk bait, again, um, awesome bait for this time of year. Again, another bait you can keep in the strike zone for a very long period of time. And you want to vary the cadence, meaning, you know, it's jerk, jerk, pause, you know, maybe jerk, 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 pause, you know, and any variation of that. And the pause at times, 15, 20 seconds. Okay, depending on the clarity, depending on the aggressiveness of the fish. Sometimes you can look out there and see them actually coming up behind it. And if you pull it too fast, you'll see they just, when the water's so cold, they don't lose interest in it. They'll, they'll lose interest in it. Okay, so I've had days where I've caught them on the blade bait, and basically when you hook them, they almost feel like a like a wet towel, you know, like you hook you know a dish rag on the bottom, and dead weight, and you'll pull them up and they just there's no fight. They'll come up and they'll just go on their side and they'll lip them and they're done. Literally a few hours later, the water can warm up one two degrees, and they'll start to eat a, a jerk bait. Okay. Um, Going back to bottom baits, if they're not aggressive enough to hit a blade bait, and you'd something that you really can leave in one spot for a long time, then I'm going to go to a Ned rig, okay? Depending, and you'll vary the, the size of the, the head depending on the depth and depending on the wind associated with, with the, the line size. All right, so you know, eighth, three, three sixteenths, eighth quarter, even a little bit bigger. Um, anywhere from, you know, six to eight to 10 pound test line, de depending on the depth and the cover. Deeper the water, clearer the water, thinner the cover, the lighter line and smaller bait you can use. Okay, so basically uh, that's the rule of thumb. So dirtier the water, heavier the cover, you're gonna bump up on the bait size and bump up on your line size, all right? The next bait I'm gonna use that you can definitely keep in one place uh, for a long period of time is a drop shot, all right? and those are the baits really I start off with. Blade bait, Ned rig, drop shot, jerk bait. 
Okay, that's that's for that watt attempt that I that I mentioned that's in the mid to upper thirties, low forties. As fish start to get a little bit more aggressive um, and move up a little bit, depending again, you're going to be through the course of the day. You'll see water temp increase a few degrees. That's when you can kind of like, you know, if they're transitioning up and, and moving a little bit and you lose contact with them, you stop catching them. That's when you're going to want to go into a little bit of search mode. I always have flat sided crankbaits tied on. Okay, these are most part five to eight feet deep, flat side, flat side, very tight wobble. Okay, very, very small profile. Happens to be a bomber. Again, a little bit, little bit deeper bait, very thin profile. I'll go to those baits. I'll also fish my crawfish colored crankbaits. This is a big O square bill, again, in crawfish pattern. Again, this bait only maybe goes to three to five feet deep. Crawfish colored wiggle wart. This bait goes to about nine feet deep. This really shines when the water temperature is above 45, you know, into the low 50s. So again, it's all water temperature related. Um, I'm also gonna be fishing some rattle trap style baits. Again, it's a bait that I can reel real slow. It's a bait that I can almost imitate a silver buddy on where I'm just pulsating it, let it hit the bottom, rip it up, let it hit the bottom, rip it up. This is bait fish imitation, crawfish imitation. This is actual rattle trap. All right. Last bait I have tied on, of course, is a jig, almost always, year round. Um, small profile, compact. This is just a little baby quarter ounce football head, a little craw on the back, very compact. Um, if I was a bass, I'd, I'd eat it myself. It looks, it looks that good. All right, and then of course bump it up a little bit. This is a half ounce jig, but I, it's a big full skirt. I haven't thinned out the skirt at all. Um, I'm also, you know, the trailer on the back is not anything to write home about. It doesn't have a lot of action to it. Um, it's basically to help bulk up the jig. And I'm looking for that slow fall and something I can maintain bottom contact with. Now, of course, there's exceptions to every rule. But those are the baits that I start off with here in the Northeast with water temp into mid to upper thirties to low to mid forties. Okay, so you're looking at blade baits, jerk baits, Ned rig, drop shot, um, your flat sided crank baits, crawfish colored crank baits, rattle and style baits, jig. All right, so we're gonna get into a lot more detail here in a few, more videos, a little bit shorter, more to the point on each one of these. So, but for now, I appreciate you tuning into the channel. As always, please like it, subscribe it, follow it, share it. I greatly appreciate it. All right, everybody have a great day.